Well, to talk a little bit more about uh, the ANC Lochotla and uh, the passing of uh, Zanele Kamagwazam Sibi, we're now joined by Professor Dirk Kotzer, who's a, a professor of political sciences at uh, UNISA. Prof, always good to talk to you. Thanks so much indeed for joining us. Good evening. Thank you very much. All right, let's start actually with that last story, the passing of uh, Zanele Kamangwazam Sibi. A number of political parties uh, offering their condolences. So uh, quite well respected. Um, even the IFP, they parted ways, but certainly recognized her as a person who was of considerable influence in politics. Yes, indeed so. Um, obviously, she played a very important role within the IFP, uh, until the, there was the split in 2011. Um, and that was uh, based on the fact that there were some people who saw her actually as a bit of a threat to the established um, leadership within the IFP, and that led to the, the, the bad relationship and ultimately the fact that uh, they split up and the formation of the National Freedom Party. Um, and initially, the National Freedom Party, especially in the local government election of 2011, did quite well. Uh, they lost, the RFP lost quite a number of votes, uh, or percentage of votes, to the NFP during that election. And the result of that was that the NFP and the ANC could form quite a number of coalition governments at local level um, in KwaZulu-Natal as a province. So there was quite a, a promising start for the party. But um, as we've heard also in this introduction, the 2016 was actually the time where the party sort of miscalculated. Um, and I think since then it has become a highly problematic sort of road for the, for the party. And I would imagine uh, a lot of these parties uh, are, qu are identified with the personalities that lead them. Uh, some of these leaders might deny it, but, you know, voters tend to vote for a person even though they're voting for a party. And I wonder if the fortunes of the party are going to suffer even more now that she's passed. Unfortunately, I think that is the prospect for this, for the NFP. Yeah. Um, it has been very much built around her, the same as with the IFP and around Chief Mango Sutu Butelezi. Um, and their absence, um, and we've heard about that already, is that the, the, the next generation or those, those below her who have to fill the gap that she is leaving, there's going to be a lot of contestation around that. And that, unfortunately, is never good for a party because it means that right at the top there's not stability. Um, and if there's not stability, then it sort of filters down to other parts of the party also. I think one, one of the aspects of the party is, is that the, 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 the fact that they were not in local government because they didn't participate in the 2016 election, meant that in the 2019 election, they did poorly in KwaZulu-Natal. And the point is, is that it is a strictly KwaZulu-Natal party. They have no presence outside KwaZulu-Natal as a province. So I think now the, the fact that they are in this predicament uh, means that the, the prospect for this election is, is, is not good at all for them. Um, when she was the deputy minister in the government between 2014 and 2019, her uh, presence, and that was in a sense a reward for the party because of this cooperation in the coalition governments at local level in KwaZulu-Natal, it gave her even more of a prominence. But since her demise um, and not being in the, in the national position as, as a deputy minister, that at the same time also had a detrimental effect on the part. So my prospect or my, my sort of expectation is, is that they don't have really a, a strong prospect for, for this election. Might that mean the end of the party in the coming years? Well, becoming a very small party. I mean, mm. we've become used to many small parties with less than 1%, and I think they will be one of them, with uh, a few, a handful of MPs, less than five, or, and, uh, and, and sort of continuing with the, the legacy, but actually they are not going to play a very important role in KwaZulu-Natal. For example, what we've seen in the 2019 election is that the, the ANC lost about 10% of its support in KwaZulu-Natal at provincial level, but most of that, those votes went to the EFF and not to the NFP um, or to the IFP. So it again is an indication that the party doesn't have really a prospect for the future.
All right, five o'clock this evening, everybody was watching the television and it was uh, the president of the ANC addressing the nation, talking about their Lukhotla. And I wonder sometimes when I hear him speak with his ANC hat, is he president of the party or president of the state when he's talking? Yes, I think this was very much a presidential address and not so much an ANC pres president or ANC's leader address. All the things that he spoke, he started with focusing on the economy. And as the insert that you've played indicated, he said, well, the main point, the main focus is jobs. Um, it sounds very much like his addresses, either the, the Sona speech in the beginning of the year, the State of the Nation address, as well as these family uh, events that he had um, as part of his announcements on the pandemic regulations. So we've become used to this. And what is for me fascinating with these type of events is, is that the ANC actually allows us now into their inner circle because this is not a national uh, a, a government event. This is a party event, um, the Lakhotla or National Executive Committee meeting. Imagine that the Federal Council of the, of the DA or the War Council of the EFF's closing remarks are broadcast live mm. um, on national TV. So it gives us an indication that the ANC has moved into a sort of a mode of not anymore simply just a party, but actually dealing with it as from a sort of a national perspective. And this is again what we saw today. All right, let's talk about the substance of the things that he said. Um, it does sound quite familiar, doesn't it? Some of the things that he said. In fact, quite a bit of what he said. Well, I, I think there was nothing really very new. I mean, he reiterated a lot of his messages. The focus was, as I said, very much on the economy in the first instance, the recovery of the economy, the plan, the recovery, uh, the re recovery and reconstruction plan that he has, uh, that was emphasized as well as then the sort of the giving capacity to the state. And something which received in this address of his a lot of attention, and that's understandable because of the local government election, is the focus on the uh, district development plan as, as, a, as a model for development and coordination between the different spheres of government, the three spheres of government, mm. but with a focus on local government. Um, so I think this, this is... Uh, more emphasis than normal that he gave on, uh, put on this. But it, as I said, it's understandable because I would say what we've heard today, in a sense, was almost a dress rehearsal of the ANC of how they are going to approach the, the campaign for the local government election and what are the issues that they are going to emphasize. Talking about local government elections, a sigh of relief, it sounds like, because they're going to get a second chance at... Uh, uh, signing up for or their candidates. Uh, I wonder, he didn't address it directly, but I'm sure there must have been discussions inside the uh, Lakhotla about why they failed to register their candidates on time. Well, there were reports that they are going to have a very intensive discussion about and trying to determine where were the failures within the administration of the ANC. Who, who should take responsibility for these failures for the, the, the nomination, uh, the registration of the nominations? So I guess that did happen, but it wasn't spelled out in front of us. Um, so I, I guess over time we are going to hear more reports about what actually happened there. But to, as you indicate, to a large extent, that they have been saved from the consequences of that mm -hmm. by the fact that the IEC now decided... Um, that the registration of nominations can continue again, uh, which is quite controversial because um, some parties, uh, like the, the bigger ones, the DA and the EFF and others, are, are very much opposed to it or are not very, uh, uh, very much in favour of it because they obviously believe that they developed an advantage over the ANC with the mistakes that the ANC made. So uh, we can almost guarantee a legal challenge then coming. Yes, the DI already indicated, I listened to one of their uh, spokespersons and they already indicated that they are going to do that. So uh, I think that is that should be expected. But there's, there's very little time left for this. Um, the registrations uh, will be next weekend, the 18th and 19th of September. 
and the registrations mm. uh, the, of, of the nominations will most possibly close almost immediately after that. So um, I'm not sure how everything will be fitted mm. into this. Um, this is a very tight schedule that I have left for all the parties. Uh, you're not a lawyer, nor am I, but one gets a sense that you almost have to go directly to the Constitutional Court for clarity on their judgment to get this out of the way. I think that the problem is, is that the Constitutional Court's order, because it's only two pages what we've received, does not refer to this. Um, and I think one of the aspects which is, is, is sort of not clarified is what they meant by that the, the timetable of the election can be amended, but when only under, under necessary circumstances. And it's referred to twice in these two pages. And the second time it actually refers to um, the, the registration of voters and not so much about, it never refers to the nomination process. So this is the interpretation that the IEC gave to, to this uh, order mm -hmm. by the court. Um, and I think um, it's, I'm not sure whether that interpretation is necessarily what the court had in mind. All right. And uh, perhaps finally, we've run out of time, but do you think that the president of the ANC said enough to give people uh, food for thought as they start to think about the local government elections? I think not much this time. It was very much a general this, mm. the, uh, address that he gave to the public. Um, there's not very specific aspects. He didn't talk very much about local government specifically, except, as I mentioned, this district uh, development model that he referred to. Uh, but the issues are going to emerge. But, you know, unfortunately for all the parties, the, the campaigning period will be very short. So yeah. it's not going to be typical of it where they, over time some issues emerge and a sort of a public debate develops around um, and I think from that point of view, it might be to the advantage of the ANC that they don't have to defend their record of local government and, and governance in general at local level. And uh, President Zuma's uh, uh, medical parole, I guess, is a good win for everybody. It is, except maybe for the public. Yeah. Um, it is for the ANC, definitely, and the internal relations within the ANC. I think this is a way out. It's a sort of a an easy solution for um, a predicament that they, that was ongoing within the ANC. But um, as we've heard from comments uh, by members of the public, there's, there's absolutely no consensus that um, about it. Some support it and some are very much critical of it because they see it as favoring persons who were in important positions versus the public and ours who will, will not receive the same treatment. So it, it's, it's a difficult situation to deal with. Um, and the, there's winners and losers in this. All right. Professor Dirk Kozza, always good to talk to you. Thank you so much indeed uh, for joining us on the program. Thank you very much. All right. That's a lecturer in politics at UNISA, Professor Dirk Kozza, giving us uh, his thoughts on the ANC's Le Chotla and uh, what's come out of that. We're going to take a quick break and when we come back, matters Guinea.